In this video, I'll discuss the geometry of a total solar eclipse and an annular solar eclipse. For the total solar eclipse, we'll calculate the width of the umbra uh, on the Earth, the width of the moon's shadow um, on the Earth. This will be a little bit approximate, um, but uh, I think you'll be able to follow the, the calculations. If you look in this sketch, it's not to scale, definitely not to scale. The sun is 400 times bigger than the moon, roughly, and the sun is roughly 400 times further away from the Earth than the moon is from the Earth. So I've compressed things a lot here in order to make uh, these triangles uh, easy, easy to see. We'll need some distances to do this calculation. The distance of the sun to the Earth, the distance of Earth to moon, and the length of the umbra, call it distance of umbra, distance u. And we'll be first calculating the length of the umbra, and then we'll use that and calculate the angle here of, uh, I'll call this theta, although perhaps I should call this phi. So I'm gonna use theta differently in a little bit. So I'm going to call this phi, the angle phi, is this half of the total angle I could draw here. We'll use the total angle later to use the central angle formula and calculate s, the arc length, which will be the width of our shadow. Um, so I'll, I'll bring this uh, drawing back a little bit later. Let's go ahead and take a look at some calculations. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the calculations. You can pause the video and look at the numbers. So we're going to do the best total solar eclipse. <clears throat> the total solar eclipse that gives us the longest duration of totality, the largest uh, shadow on the Earth. To get our best total solar eclipse, <clears throat> the sun should be far from the Earth. So this would be aphelion, and the distance is uh, given on the page here, 152.1 million kilometers. And to make the moon have a big angular size on the sky, the moon should be close to the Earth. This would be perigee. So 3.565 times 10 to the fifth kilometers, I believe, is the closest uh, perigee to the Earth. NASA website has a little bit bigger number that I think is more of an average perigee. So we're going to use similar triangles to calculate the length of the umbra. Let's uh, take a look at this first. See radius of the sun in the numerator, radius of the moon. Let's take a look at the two triangles that are being used here. The radius of the sun is at the opposite side to the angle phi. And then this length here, it's radius of the earth plus a little bit plus this squiggle, and how do we get that? We get that by taking distance of the umbra minus the distance from Earth to Moon. That'll give us this little squiggle. We'll add that on to the Earth-Sun distance to get the length of this side of the large triangle. For the case of the triangle that involves the radius of the Moon, radius of the Moon is the opposite side, and the length of the umbra is the uh, uh, other side that completes the proportions. So that's where this uh, comes from. Again, pause and uh, take a look at that if you need to. Putting in the numbers, um, radius of the sun, and I've cross multiplied here. So radius of the sun times the distance of the umbra equals radius of the moon times this quantity, Earth to sun distance, distance of the umbra, and then the Earth-Moon distance subtracted. You should check these calculations yourself. 1737.5 divided by the radius of the sun gives the small number. And then I've added these numbers inside, or sorry, I've subtracted these numbers inside the parentheses. Um, and then I can always put one in front of a quantity. So we're about to gather like terms, and we're going to take 1 minus this coefficient. I'm going to subtract this term from both sides. So we'll do that. 
and we get 0.9975 times the length of the umbra equals this number. We do that division and we find that the umbra has a length of 3.799 times 10 to the fifth kilometers, uh, 380,000 kilometers. Does this umbra reach the earth, reach the surface of the earth? Well, if you look back up here, here's our distance for the case of perigee. The moon is close to the earth and in fact closer than this distance. So yes, we do have uh, the umbra hitting the surface of the earth. And our next challenge will be to find the diameter of the umbra. I'm going to go back to this, uh, this drawing. To find the width of the umbra, that's this full S, this arc length here. I'm going to use the central angle formula. S equals R theta. S equals R times theta. R is this distance here. And we're going to generate that from a calculation. And then theta is actually 2 times phi. 2 times phi. Phi is half of the angle. Theta is the full angle across there. So let's see how this uh, operates to find the width of the shadow. So S equals R theta. I've kind of expanded that uh, S equals R theta triangle. And our task will be to find R and to find theta. So let's do the theta first. Here is the phi that I'm now writing as theta over 2. Um, it's the radius of the moon divided by the distance of the umbra. So we have a situation where um, the uh, angle can be calculated easily from this small triangle. So the radius of the moon is one side. The length of the umbra is the hypotenuse. The right angle being up here, this grazing line is tangent to the circle. So we have a right angle there. So the hypotenuse is, um, could call it the base of this right triangle, um, the way it's oriented. So radius of the moon divided by hypotenuse, that's equal to the sine of theta. And theta is equal to uh, 2 times the phi. Um, or phi is equal to uh, theta divided by 2. <clears throat> so we put in the numbers, radius of the moon, the length of the umbra that we just previously calculated. Um, sine of theta over 2 is equal to this number. To find the value of theta, first take inverse sine of both sides. So applying the inverse sine function to both sides. On the left side, the two functions cancel. Inverse sine and sine functions cancel, leaving us with theta over 2. Inverse sine of this number, you could check it on your calculator if you're in degree mode. You'll get 0 0.26205. And the central angle then, theta, is 0 0.5241. In the S equals R theta, theta must be in radians. So I'm converting that to radians with pi radians divided by 180 degrees. So 9.147 times 10 to the minus 3 radians. Okay, so what about the R, the R value? How, what is that distance from the tip of the umbra to the surface of the earth? Well, if we would start with just the distance of the umbra, that would be too long. That would be too long by this portion here from the center of the moon to the moon to the Earth's surface. So how could we come up with, uh, with that value? Let's take a look at the calculation here. The distance of the umbra, the umbra minus the Earth-Moon distance minus radius of the Earth. So we'll come back to our drawing here. So the length of the umbra is where we start with. And then if we take the Earth-Moon distance and subtract the radius of the Earth, we're left with this piece here. And that's the piece we need to get rid of from the length of the umbra. So you might pause and replay that just a little bit to make sure you know, understand where that's coming from. We put in the numbers. We get the R value. This is not the radius of the Earth. It's not the distance to the moon. It's the distance from the tip of the umbra to the surface of the Earth. 
from the tip of the umbra to the surface of the earth. It's the R value that's required. We now put those in and multiply. We come up with 272 kilometers, roughly. Uh, in the United States, we like to talk about miles sometimes. Um, so we'll do that, convert it to miles. And I came up with 169 miles. That's not too bad. Uh, one website I saw it said around 170 miles for the maximum width of the umbra on the surface of the Earth. So that's one case. Let's do another one now. Suppose we're at the worst situation. We're at the worst situation. The sun is close to the Earth. Of course, that happens in January. The sun is close to the Earth, so it's going to have a bigger angular size in the sky. So we're now at perihelion for the Earth. And now the moon, to make the moon smaller, apparently, needs to be further away. So now the moon is at apogee. And we're going to, again, develop equations and see if we can calculate the length of the umbra. So in doing this, here's our similar triangles, again involving the radius of the sun, and then distance of um, sun to earth minus a quantity. Distance earth to moon minus distance of the umbra. Let's see if we can uh, tie that into our, our diagram here. So distance earth to moon, that's here to here minus the length of the umbra, that's here. So that's getting rid of this uh, portion I have in red squiggles. That's the length that's being calculated by distance earth moon minus distance of the umbra. And that is, in fact, what we need to subtract from the sun to earth distance to give us the length of this side of, again, a triangle. And again, we've got a right triangle here in both situations. This line is just grazing the, the circle that represents the moon and the sun. Um, so we put in the numbers and do the calculation. Again, pause if you need to slow things down. But it goes very similar to the previous one. It's just we have different numbers in here for the close approach of the Earth to the sun and the max distance from the moon away from the Earth. Those numbers have changed, changing the number inside the parentheses. And Again, boiling it down, we get the distance to the umbra tip from the moon, 3.673 times 10 to the fifth kilometers. Will we have a uh, total solar eclipse? Well, here's where the tip of the umbra resides away from the center of the moon. Here is the distance of the moon from the Earth. And you can see that the number is smaller. Uh, the umbra does not reach the Earth. But there will be an event to look at. The moon is smaller on the sky than the sun. Angular size is smaller than the angular size of the sun. So the moon doesn't totally cover the sun. It will have an annular eclipse. And that annular eclipse will look a little bit like this, perhaps, if the moon is passing uh, right through the center of the disk of the sun on the sky. This annular eclipse, it'll be dark in here and then very bright around the edge um, and again a reminder anytime any portion of the bright um, surface of the sun is visible it's officially called the photosphere anytime that is visible you must wear uh, special solar viewing glasses uh, with the iso number that you've probably read about and so forth but um, must protect your eyes do not um, use a telescope or binoculars pointed at the sun and then come to view the through the telescope or the binoculars with those solar viewing glasses on your eyes very dangerous the telescope or binoculars will gather light and melt through the uh, sun viewing film glasses and damage your eye uh, the sunlight must first hit a special filter so if you are using a telescope or binoculars, you must purchase, acquire somehow, a filter that fits on the end of the telescope or the binoculars that are closest to the sun. The filter must go on the end of the telescope or the end of the binoculars that are closest to the sun. It's really, if you're not experienced with this, it's better that you don't use binoculars or a telescope. 
just view using your eyes without any optical aid, but have those special solar viewing glasses on um, so that your eyes are protected from all that sunlight that will damage your retina. Your retina does not have any nerves in it, so it does not sense pain when the damage starts. Uh, extremely important you wear those solar viewing glasses. So if you want to look up some solar uh, resources, solar eclipse resources, and some general astronomy resources, astronomy.gpclements.com, astronomy.gpclements.com, and that site will help you prepare for the eclipse. I hope you have a safe viewing experience.